Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Nandi back again. Today we are going to discuss about ANOVA. So without further ado, I'll share my screen with you. So we are going to do detailed calculations on ANOVA. First of all, ANOVA stands for analysis of variance. The problem states that numbers in thousands of firms per state found in three sections of the country are listed below. Test a claim at alpha equal to 0 0.05 that the mean number of firms is same across these sections. So we have data for Eastern third of the nation, data for middle third of the nation, and data for Western third of the country, okay? So first of all, we'll enter the data set uh, from the three different sections, that is the Eastern third, middle third, and the Western third in List as L1 and calculate X bar, which is the mean of the first uh, set of data, which is Eastern third is 35.4, and sum of all X is 177 again for the Eastern third. And uh, we will also note down the SX, the sample standard deviation for the first treatment of the Eastern third, which is 18.756, sample size n equal to 5. We'll repeat the calculations for L2 and we will get the mean for the Second treatment of the middle third, X bar is 68.75. Sum of all X's is 275. And SX or standard deviation of the second treatment or middle third is uh, 18.392 and N equal to four. Repeat it again for L3. And we get the mean for L3, which is the third treatment of Western third is 44.25. Sum of X is 177. And standard deviation for the uh, last treatment of the Western third is 16.661, sample size N equal to four. Next, we will calculate the grand mean X double bar. Grand means means all these data points. There are in total 13 data points, and we will find the average of all the 13 data points. Uh, of data points, okay? So 13 data points from all of these three treatments, we'll find the grand average of all these 13 data points. Basically, we will add the sum of X for L1, sum of X for L2, sum of X for L3, and divide by five plus four plus four, which is 13. And that grand average X double bar comes out as 48.39. Next, we are going to find out the treatment sum of squares. That is, we are trying to find the variation, okay, between the average of each treatment from the grand mean. So what is the difference between the mean of each treatment from the grand average? The difference, we square it and multiply by each sample size and add them together. So again, sum square treatment, we are trying to find out what is the variation of the average of each treatment or each, uh, each population or each sample coming from three different population from the grand average. So for example, the first one is X1 bar, which is the mean of treatment one minus X double bar, which is the grand average of all the 13 data points and multiplied by sample size of the first treatment, which is five. And you of course square the difference and multiply it by the sample size for treatment one. Repeat this for all the two other treatments and add the squares, sum of the squares to get the sum of the squares of treatment, which is 2,570.377. So this is a measure of the squares of the variation of the mean of each treatment from the uh, grand average, okay? That's called sum square treatment, okay? How do you find the mean square treatment? We take the sum square treatment and divide it by the number of treat, uh, treatment minus one, okay? So it's 2570.377 divided by, we have three treatments, three minus one, two, and the mean square treatment is 1285.19. Next, we are going to find out sum square error. What is the variation in each treatment? We're not comparing it to the grand average, we're trying to find out what is the square of the variation in each treatment. So, and adding them up. So for example, for the first one, we take sample size minus one, N1 minus one, and multiply it by S1 square, which is the standard deviation of treatment one. Repeat it for the other two treatments and add the squares, and we get some square error as 3254.71. For example, for the first one, sample size is five, five minus one is four, multiplied by standard deviation of treatment one, which is 18.756 squared. Do it for all the other two, add them up, you get the sum square error. This gives us a measure of the squares of the variation in each treatment, okay? And how do we calculate the mean square error from that? We take the sum square error and divide it by N minus K. N is the total number of sample size, which is 13. K is the number of treatment, which is three. 13 minus three is 10 in the denominator. Sum square error is 3254.71 divided by 10, gives you the mean square for errors, which is 325.47. Now in ANOVA, the null hypothesis is mu one equal to mu two equal to mu three. That is the mean of population one is equal to mean of population two is equal to mean of population three. And alternate is at least one of the mu's is different. Okay, so first we have to calculate a test statistic, which is F, which is mean square treatment by mean square error, which is 1255.19 calculated in step seven, uh, 1285.19 calculated in step seven divided by 325.47 calculated in step nine. 
and it works out as 3.95. So I have shown you the F distribution, which is not a bell-shaped curve, it is a skewed curve, positively skewed curve. It starts from zero. We calculated an F statistic of 3.95, which I've shown on the horizontal axis from that 3.95 value. We draw a vertical line to make meet the F distribution. Now in F distribution comes with two degrees of freedom. One for degrees of freedom for the numerator, which in our case is K minus one, three minus one is two and degrees of freedom in the denominator, which is the degrees of freedom for some square error, which is capital N minus K. Capital N is 13 total data points, minus three is 10, okay? So we need to find the p-value. P-value is the area to the right of 3.95 test statistic under the F curve with degrees of freedom in the numerator two and degrees of freedom in the denominator 10. So how do we do that? We do uh, go to second verse, step 11, second verse, and scroll down to FCDF. Lower is 3.95 because we start from 3.95. Upper is 1. E is second comma 99, which is a very large number on the right-hand side. Degrees of freedom of the numerator is 2. Degrees of freedom in the denominator is 10. We paste, enter, and enter. We get a p-value in step 12 of 0 0.054, which is greater than alpha 0 0.05. Since p is greater than alpha, decision is failed to reject H0. And therefore, we do not have enough evidence at alpha equal to 0 0.05 to support the alternate HA. There is another way to do this test is we go to stat, test, and we scroll down to ANOVA and hit enter. Now, ANOVA will open up the left parenthesis. Inside the parenthesis, we'll type L1, which is second one, comma, second two, comma, second three, close the right parenthesis and enter. We'll get the same F test statistic, 3.95. P value is 0 0.054. P greater than alpha. Decision is failed to reject H0. I just wanted to mention to you that uh, in ANOVA test, we are comparing the means of K samples. In our case, K is three. We want equal to mu two equal to mu three. But actually, we are doing an F test, which is the ratio of two variances, one coming from treatment, which is the variation of each uh, treatment mean from the grand mean divided by degrees of freedom, which is K. And on, that is in the numerator in the F. And in the denominator, we are comparing, the, we are calculating the variation in each, uh, uh, in each treatment, the sample in each treatment. Okay? So basically, we are comparing two variances. The idea is if the means are equal, then the variances in uh, treatment and the variation in error treatment is very uh, difference from each mean to the grand mean square, and the error is variation in each uh, treatment. Okay. The, those two variances should not be too different if the means are equal. But in our case, we found out they are different. Uh, they're not different, right? We found out they're not different. Therefore, we did not reject the null hypothesis. So the idea is if the means are equal, the variance is calculated in two ways. One, the variation from the grand, grand mean and the other variation inside each treatment sample, in each sample. The, these variances should be comparable if the means are equal, which was true in our case. Now, if the means are not equal, the variances will be totally different and P value will be less than alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. So the idea is means when means are equal, the variances calculated in two ways should be about the same and we will fail to reject the null hypothesis, which is true in our case. So although we are testing for the means, we are comparing variances calculated in two ways. That is the main idea in an over test. I will stop here today. If you have any question, please do not hesitate to write a comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching and keep watching my channel. Please, please subscribe to my channel because I get back each week with new problems solved with TI-84. Thanks again and have a great day. Please subscribe to my channel. See you.